Good evening, church, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Cole. I'm the pulpit minister here at Central Church of Christ. This is Dan Spath. He's one of our elders. And here at Central Church of Christ, it's our mission to be God's heart and hands in this community and beyond. If you'd like to learn more about what that means, I want to encourage you to go over to www.churchofvictoria.com. You can check out our website there and check out the church and see what we're all about. Uh, this is our Wednesday evening conversation through the law and the prophets where we crack open the Old Testament and we see how it leads to Jesus. Um, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 19 mm -hmm. tonight. Exodus chapter 19. If you're listening to this on the Heart and Hands podcast, I want to thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe or make sure to subscribe and have the bell turned on so you get notified every time we upload a video. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to like and share the video. Comment down below. That really helps us out. Um, if this ministry has blessed you in any way and you'd like to contribute or partner with us, you can head over to the uh, website. There's a donate button there at the top. You can click that and it'll take you to PayPal and you can figure it out from there. Uh, so like I said, we're going to be in Exodus 19. I'm excited. This is... Uh, this is kind of where it's all been leading. Yeah, this is where it kind of kind of starts now, don't it? it, it yeah, it it's, really it's, it's just getting started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, really, it really is just now going to get started. Well, you know, from excited. now on, it's uh, it's it's going to be going clipping. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Let's pray. Yeah, Father in heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity we have to sit down and study together again. We pray, Father, that that you help to lead us through your word and help us to learn it. Help us to have the courage to apply it to our lives. Help us to really look at and see what you're trying to tell us through the, what happened to your people so long ago. Uh, Father, we pray you be with our audience. Every one of them has something, many things going on in their lives. And we just pray, Father, that, that you bless each one of them. And that we might say things today that might touch hearts and might inspire them uh, to to do a, have a greater greater appreciation and a greater connection to you. And we thank you for those opportunities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, brother, before we jump into Exodus 19, uh, let me ask, what is a covenant and how important are covenants to God's plan of redemption? Well, you know, a covenant is, is, a, is an agreement, okay? I, I guess basically it's like a contract kind of, you know, it's a, you know, I, I learned it a long time ago. It's, a, it's, a, it's an agreement between two parties with conditions to be met on both sides, which is kind of true. Uh, but God, God gave many covenants. It wasn't just one. This is, this is, uh, you know, he gave a covenant, covenant to Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham. And if you look at, at the book of Galatians, it says that that promise that he made to Abraham overrides the, the, the covenant of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, it overrides that, you know, that, that Jesus came to fulfill that promise and to finish the law. So this covenant that he's going to give here. Is a is an agreement between his people, but it's basically a, a roadmap of how to live their lives. Basically, is is what it is. But it is a covenant between them and God. You know, you here's here's my law. I know you can't obey it, so I'm going to put provisions in there for you to have uh, a relief from it. Uh, but you still need to. And if you do this, I'll, I'll I will bless you, and I'll and, and we'll, you'll be great. Well, they don't do it, but uh, yeah. but that's basically to me. It's a it's a I guess a I guess you probably. Uh, agreement, agreement that God gives, and God makes with them. Of course, they don't really make an agreement back on, on. They just have some conditions they need to meet. Why? Why does God deal with us through covenants? I mean, you, we, I, I mean, going all the way back, right? We've seen Him make a covenant with Noah in Genesis six, or Genesis, excuse me, rather nine. Uh, we've seen him, well, as you said, make a covenant with Abraham. He makes that covenant in Genesis 12. He makes it in 15. He makes it in 17. I mean, he he constantly is kind of affirming this covenant, yes, these yes. promises. Um, why does God deal with people in that manner? Like, why why not just wave wave a hand? No, but we have we have freedom of choice, man. You know, just like it was in the garden. Hmm. He could have not put the tree in the garden. You know. But he put it there and said, "Don't eat through that tree." So they had choice. I mean, we have. We what can, is the choice? What is the choice that we have? Well, we have a choice to believe and obey God or not. Mm -hmm. you know, we still have that choice. You know, people today have still have the same right. They, you know, they they don't have to believe. You know, God gives us the freedom not to believe and not to be obedient. He gives us that freedom. He's a just and merciful God, and He says, "I want you to love me. I want you to be obedient. I want you to do what I tell you. But I'm not going to force you to." So a contract, I mean, a, a covenant is where God's saying, here, this is what I want. This is what I need you to do. Now, if, this, if you do this, you'll be blessed and it'll be great. But if you don't, okay, that's your choice. You know, when I when I do a wedding, I, many times, most times, I, I, I affirm it to it. This is a covenant between two parties. 
between you guys together and you guys to God. It's a covenant and, and it's an agreement that you're making to God before people and God that, uh, that you're going to be, uh, uh, that you're going to be bound together. And, and I think, uh, I think God looks at us like that. You know, he looks at us as, you know, I want desperately to have a relationship with him and I'm going to give them this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I'm going to bless them more than they can possibly imagine. But there's going to be conditions. It's, it's, it's like with your children or anything else. There's conditions are going to be met, going to have to be met. And if we do that, God will bless us. He promises that every time. He promised them that when he's going to give them this covenant now. He promised Abraham, you know, but he said, you, he said I'm, going to, I'm going to make of you a great nation. Well, what did we find out when we, when we started studying about Abraham? He wasn't all that, man. He, he left a lot to be desired. He was a liar and a, like you call him a pimp. Yep. Yeah. He pimped out his wife, basically. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I mean, but he was, but he was the the father that was called, and and I think that God does that uh, because when when we're obedient to a covenant, when we're obedient to that to that uh, call to us, it's the ultimate glory to God. Well, and we've seen just how how bad these people can be too, right? He's bad in the, in the sense that they don't believe God, they don't trust God. And, and something, something somebody said to me one time has, has kind of stuck with me. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the, the call. call. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's this sense that, especially in today's day and age, right? People walk into church and they go, oh my gosh, these people are, are, are hypocrites, right? They say this, but they do that. You know, there's a difference between being a hypocrite and being someone who struggles and with hypocrisy, and with struggle. Well, or there's a sin. struggle, or with with sin. What or what have you, right? Can it lead? Can it be hypocrisy? Of course it can. But these are the type of people that God is dealing with. Mm -hmm. It's no different out in the world. It's in in the church. You have people who are struggling, who are trying, who are who are trying to be God's people, trying to live well, in His trying, place. They're his trying glory. to they're trying to bring honor to a covenant relationship with God. They're trying, and in a lot of times they fail. But it's, it's always been interesting to me to see the people who look at the church or look at Christians and say, well, y'all are a bunch of hypocrites. Well, <laughs> there's and there's some truth to that. Well, where should they be? If they are a bunch of hypocrites, where should but, they be? And I think that's the, the fundamental misunderstanding is we're not here because we're awesome people. God didn't call Abraham because Abraham was an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. God didn't choose Jacob and his sons in the line of Judah because Jacob or Judah was an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, you know, because uh, is, uh, Isaac was an awesome guy. God yeah. is choosing these people because of his own choice, and he's qualifying them along the way. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the same thing here with the people of Israel. We have seen them up until Exodus 19. They have witnessed God do amazing things things that that you and i have not seen in that way no. right huge miraculous wonders all of these things and yet they still don't believe they're stubborn yeah. in their disbelief and yep. yet god is has, is going to work his plan anyway yep. and in exodus 19 we see that we see He's brought these people here to Mount Sinai. And it says in, in the verse one, on the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. So this is three months after they left Egypt, mm -hmm. you know, three months after witnessing the sea part, three months after witnessing all of these plagues fall on Pharaoh, three months after watching Pharaoh destroyed, three months after. And along the way, they've been following this pillar of fire and pillar of smoke. I mean, this is unreal. Well, three months after they left all that, three minutes after they just saw that pillar of cloud or pillar of the pillar of smoke. Yeah, you know I mean, a pillar of cloud. Yeah, you know I mean, it's three minutes or three seconds. You know, so it's not been three months. They have had God in front of them every single second. Every single second. Yeah, every and single second. Let me ask you, based on what they've seen, based on what we know they've seen and encountered, right? Food materializing out of the ground, quail just coming out of nowhere, right? All of these different water things. Water out of a rock. Water out of a rock. From this, from my vantage point, from a reading, from a from an engaging with the text reading vantage point, right? I'm sitting here thinking there isn't anything that this God can't do. Like, what exactly can this God not do? Well, that's logical thinking, right? That's Little logic. Bit. Is it too well, logical? We, well, you know, when we get we get complacent, these people get complacent. The cloud's always going to be there. 
It's just it's it, it it's just it's just a fi- a fixture now. They don't even notice it anymore because they they've seen it for so long. They you know, they their their expectation is well you you you're supposed to take care of us because you took us out of there. You drug us out of there kicking and screaming, so you should take care of us. That's kind of the way they're going to act. Mm. That's kind of the way they're going. You know, their whole history. If you're going to see it all when we get to the book of Deuteronomy, he's going he's going to have to tell them now choose this day who you're going to serve. That's what Joshua said. You know, but in Deuteronomy, he said, he said, I'm going to give you a choice between life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life. He wants them to choose life. They're not going to. They're not going to. So he's going to have to kill. He's going to have to kill the, the, the biggest majority of the, the older people because they won't do what he tells them. They, they get complacent. You know, you and I would think, oh, we would be different. No, we wouldn't. We're the same like that here. It gets it gets so mundane sometimes for us it's so commonplace to go to church because we don't look at it the way we talked about before we started when we were down in the office we were taught you know this is a place where we bring glory to god we learn how to bring glory to god where we learn together how to glorify god that's what church is that's what worship is on sunday morning that's what what class is tonight when we go to class i mean what we do you know we're gonna have a meeting tonight you know that we, i mean that, that's where we learn how to bring glory to god you know, it doesn't always work well. Sometimes it gets gets sideways. But you know what? We're going to do it together. Right. You know, that meeting we're going to have, I don't really want to go to that meeting. Hmm. You don't either. But you know what? We're going to do it together. We're going to be there together. Well, that's, and that gives us strength to do what we need to do. It glorifies and, God. Absolutely. Absolutely it glorifies God. That's what that's what these people are going to forget. You know, and they're going to they're gonna be reminded from time to time. Yeah. I would push back a little bit. Mm-hmm. If we were there, we, literally we, would be different because we're different. This covenant is different. This The covenant that we have in God, we, the, so a what lot I of meant, times. What I mean, if you I and know, I, I, know, I know, if you and I were planted at right. Sinai. Peace. I know, I know, yeah. If know. we if we were transported back and that's where we would we be were, exactly like them. We grew up with them. We would be exactly like them. I agree 100%. Exactly. But in the church. This is where the difference is. We're going to see this covenant begin with Absolutely, Israel. Yeah, I see what but you're the saying. new covenant we have in it's Christ be, is different. Vastly, different. vastly different. The only reason we succeed in the church where they failed is because of the differences in covenant. And and that difference in covenant is we have the blood of Christ. Well, we have his spirit. And we but we have the blood of Christ is what brought us the spirit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have yeah. the blood of Christ. They have blood of bulls and goats and Hebrews chapter 10 says the yeah. blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin. Right. The covenant we're under, God says in Jeremiah 31, we're under a covenant. We're going to be under a covenant that where God not only forgives sins but forgets them. Well, in Ezekiel 37, he says, I'm going to take out your heart of stone. I'm going to put in a new heart. So we get a new heart. Not only do we get a new heart, but then he says, and then I'm going to put my spirit in you yeah. to move you yeah. to do the things. Yeah. Jeremiah 31, Absolutely. he says, you'll have you'll have the law of God in your heart and yeah. in your mind. In your right? mind. Yep. So this covenant, though, is the beginning. And this is a type. So where he's going to say some things to Israel here, and, and it's going to it's going to it's going to refer yes. forward, yeah. Yes. All right. So in verse three, so then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, "This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant." Then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole (laughs) earth is mine. So understand, God lays claim to all the nations of the earth. All the earth. It's all his. He's not saying just Israel is Mm -hmm. mine. All of it is his. But among his possessions... Israel is going to be, be the treasured. Treasured. And that and that's that and we're going to refer guys, we're going to be referring to the New Testament a lot, I think. Because this first Peter chapter two, verse nine says, he's talking about the church, says, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging right. to who? To, to God. That's, you know, right. that's exactly what he says here. For what purpose? To declare the praise of him who called you out of glory, I mean out of darkness into his one glorious light or something of that point. We're here to glorify God. Absolutely. That's the mission of the Absolutely. church Absolutely. every every time. But so, it, but it's so it's so you're going to see them run parallel type in anytime. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. All to, from now on. That's why we said here we start. Now we start. That's right. Within Israel, and the Hebrew writer calls it shadows. But within the the nation of Israel and this covenant at Sinai, 
we're seeing patterns that will come to fruition, that will come to play in the new covenant. You know, some I've thought of, you know, we've, we've done all the classes we've done. How many classes we've done on Wednesday night? A lot. Now, we've come all the way from Genesis, mm -hmm. chapter, what, 3, 12, something like that? No, from the beginning. From, from, came Genesis so we've come all that way. We've done Genesis and now Exodus and 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 we and really we all that was the introduction of the book to the shepherd and on. That's really what it was all about, wasn't it? Because it was it was really Listen, the introduction to here. Because so, here's because we said here's where it starts. So this this comes into play. To some degree, I agree with you. I think Genesis three and twelve, mm -hmm. Genesis one twenty six, so that statement of who mankind is and yeah. Genesis uh, I said three, but Genesis 12. Well, let's say from, from the time of Abraham. Yeah. From Abraham on, it's this been an introduction. This is a major portion of God fulfilling his mm -hmm. covenant to Abraham. Remember, he told Abraham in Genesis, he said, "I'm your descendants are going to be slaves, and I'm going to bring them out, and I'm going to make them a nation. I'm going to give them land. I'm going to be their God. I'm going to do all these things. We're seeing that and fulfilled he tells here. Him, and he also tells him, and through your seed, all nations will be blessed. That's and right. That, and, he, and, he, and he refers back to that in Galatians when Paul writes to the church of Galatia. He, he says, he said it wasn't to seeds. It was to one seed. That's right. What he said. The promise was to one seed, the mediator. Second Timothy says that Jesus was that mediator between That's us right. and God. So Absolutely. So although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom, excuse me, a kingdom of priests. Now we're going to see priests, this concept of priests developed a lot more yeah, yeah, um, cool. as we go on. But what essentially, what is a priest? A priest is God's representative to the people and the people's representative to, to God. God. And so church. He's the go-between. He, yes, he's the go-between. He's the go-between. Church, you're a kingdom of priests. We just talked about that out of Peter. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, I believe, says that. We're a kingdom of priests. We are a kingdom of priests. We are his chosen, holy people, a priesthood. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. So think about it, church. If you're in the church, if you're a member of the church, you're supposed to be God's representative to who? To the people. To the world. To the world. The to lost. the world that to is the lost. lost. Yeah. And you're supposed <laughs> to be the lost's representative to who? To God. Why aren't we praying more with people in the world? When you go out to eat, uh, I imagine. Know, I, I, let me. I think, go ahead. I, think, I think we do. You know, I think. I think on an individual basis. You know, I think there's a lot of that going on. I, I hear of it all. I just, like I said, I just went into Walmart today and had a lady had me a piece of paper and said, would you please pray for these people tonight in your class? I said, absolutely. Good, good. See, that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, that's how, I know of somebody here that drives our bus that, that's got all kinds of issues in his life. But, you know, I've, I have seen him and experienced him pray with people in a restaurant and say, would you mind, why don't you come and pray with us? And church, what I, if, I want to encourage you. If you're not doing that, get bold, mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. That's your job. That's, uh, that is well, our job as priests. If nothing else, to be the representative from God to them. So represent him in the right way. That's represent right. him in a way that would bring honor to him. That's right. Not being the same way the world is. It only you're only changed when you come into this building. Mm, yeah. But when you go out the building, you're the same person as you were when you were in the building. It's the same thing. You know, and it and sadly, so many people that call themselves Christians are one way at church. Mm. You know, I, I I've said before I had a study going on one day and I was studying with this guy, and it was a father of a guy that I was studying with. And he wasn't a member of the church, wasn't, wasn't faithful to God, didn't have. And so we were talking and he said, wait a minute. He said, what church you belong to? And I told him, he said, does, and he made the name off. Go to your church? I said, yeah, he goes to our church. And he said, then I ain't never come to your church. He said, if that's the kind of people you've got going to your church, he said, I don't have no part of it. I went, what was I supposed to do with that? You see, yeah, that, and you know, if if we're going to be representatives of God, that means on the job, on vacation, you know, at the gas station. And this highlights such a this this highlights such an such an interesting position because we just talked about right. You know, people look at it and go, "Oh, that building is full of hypocrites." Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's so there's so much tension there because it's on one hand 
it's a hospital for the sick. And on the other hand, you're supposed to be getting better. Yeah. It goes hand in hand. Yeah. You're not supposed to stay. Mm -hmm. You're right. We, he transferred us Colossians 1 14. He transferred us out of the yep, kingdom yep. of darkness and into, into the, kingdom the kingdom of light. Of light. Yep. And so then Paul would say, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. Yeah. Within the church, we have this paradigm. You have broken and hurt people that are being fixed, mm -hmm. but there's an expectation that you are being fixed. Abraham was a, was a scoundrel. You're a medic. You right. were a paramedic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You bet dealt with a lot of hospitals. Yeah. Okay. Did everybody get well in the hospital? No, some people died. Do, do they die because they're just too sick or they die sometimes because people don't know what they're doing? They die sometimes because people don't know what they're doing. Okay. Do they die sometimes because there just was time for them to die? They were just going to die. There was nothing that anybody was going to be able to do. You know, this ain't no different. Okay. There are people That's here that will get, there are gonna, people here going to get good. They're going to get well. Right. You know, they're, they're, they're getting well now. I know people in this place and I know people that, that are sick and have things going and they're getting better. I know them. I know who they are. And we know some that are that sick are, and, that, and they're probably not, maybe not going to get better because every, every remedy we try, every medicine we give them doesn't work. And that happens in a hospital, even with competent doctors and competent nurses, they give them and give them and give them and they still die anyway. But at some point the analogy breaks down, but the, of course it does. But, so, but the point is that we're supposed to be getting better. That's, Abraham that's got better. You yes, can see in does. his walk yeah. that he becomes more faithful, mm -hmm. that he becomes more of all of those things, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's the intent with this. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant in verse 5, well, uh, we're far yeah. down, verse 6, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. What does it mean to be holy? I think sometimes we build this concept in our mind. It's actually really simple. It's not, it's not this, we think, when I think, when I first heard the word holy, I thought, oh man, holy, man, that means perfect, perfect good, no flaws, no flaws, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's like a, a perfectly cut, transparent piece of glass or diamond with no imperfections in it. And it's something that's placed on a pedestal. None of that is true. It is not what holy means. Holy means set aside. Set apart. It's set apart. Mm -hmm. This is a holy now, this is, this is a very rude uh, analogy, but this is a holy cup. Why? Because it is set aside specifically for my coffee. Mm -hmm. That's all it's for. Mm -hmm. I don't put anything else in this cup. I don't put soup in this mm -hmm. cup. I don't put nothing. This is a holy cup. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's Not that in the concept. sense of what this is talking about, but in the sense of what the definition is. In the sense of the definition. Yeah. The word literally means set aside for yeah. a dedicated purpose. Yeah. And that's what, he's, that's what he's going to tell these people. I'm going right. to set you aside. I, even though I own it all... I'm going to take you and set you apart for some specific things to do. What happens if you have a a tool that is set aside for a specific task and it doesn't do that task? What do you do with that tool? Well, you don't use it for that task. You go get the tool that does you, that does do the task. Well, if you have a Phillips head screwdriver, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. that breaks, mm -hmm. the piece flicks off the corner so mm -hmm. it no longer fits in the thing, mm -hmm. is it good for that task anymore? No. Are you going to keep it for that no. task? No. So... With his kingdom of priests, mm -hmm. we're going to see them spectacularly fail in this task. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And eventually, what is he going to do? Yeah. Right. So, I'm making this covenant with you, but you're going to have this specific purpose. He's already said you're going to be a kingdom <laughs> of priests and a holy nation. So, you're going to be set aside, dedicated to a task. In other words, I'm not just... You're, I'm not just pulling you up out of where you were so that you can lay about and do nothing all day. Yeah. I've got something in mind for you. He tells him, these are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words of the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all, all responded together. We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud. So right now, it's just the voice. Mm -hmm. It's just the mm -hmm. voice speaking mm -hmm. on the mountain. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to the Moses, Moses, <laughs> Lord said to the Moses, <laughs> the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day. Because on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that you do not approach the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain is to be put to death. They are to be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on them. 
No person or animal shall be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast, may they approach the mountain. So this is all really specific stuff. Why is God doing this? Why all these specific strictures? I mean, after all the work he's done to get these people, why is he all of a sudden now saying, now don't just come up here? I think, I don't, I don't know if this is right, but, for, you know, for him to set himself apart that he is God. That he is holy. They're going to hear his voice. Okay? But has it, hasn't his whole entire purpose been to be in relationship with us? He's fixing to give them a covenant, though. You know, he's just been he's been leading them and protecting them and guiding them to this place. Now he's going to give them a covenant. Now he's going to depend on them to realize how important this covenant is. How important it is to be obedient to him. How important it is to do what he tells them. What, what, how, how important do you think it, they're going to find it if, if an animal walks up and walks across that boundary and dies on the spot? You know, I mean, they've watched Egyptians die. Okay, they've watched them die. Yeah, they haven't watched their own people die. Not yet. They will, but not yet. And uh, and to watch that happen, watch God's power unleashed upon them, and and th you know they're they're uh, they're being commanded. I mean, they they're going to hear the voice. They're they're going to hear him. They're going to see him. They're going to hear him. And they're going to they, you know in next chapter they're going to they're going to be scared. Rightly so, they should be scared. They should be afraid. You know, our relationship is different. I'm, I'm in, res I respect him. I have a healthy respect. I'm not afraid because if I'm, if I'm doing the right things, God said, I'm going to be your father. Well, I'm not afraid of my father. Right. I, I, I respect what he, what he's capable of doing. I respect what he says to do. That's why it bothers me so much when I do something against him, when I do something that I shouldn't do because I respect him so much and it bothers me. And then I do it and I'm going, why'd I do that? I know better to do that. I know that. I mean, I didn't. I didn't think about it. I just did it. Why not do that? You know, when it brings so much, so much hurt to him, to watch his child do something so disrespectful. You know, and yet he continues to love me. That's right. But the reason that I made a I made a covenant with you, you have to understand how important this is to me. That's right. I don't think they understood. I don't think they get it. And he, they're going to get it now. Don't come touch the mountain. That's You're going right. to hear me, but don't touch it. Don't let the animals even touch it. That's how sacred this place is. Because this, remember, this is holy ground. This is where God, well, it's like the, it's like in the, when he's going to give them the law, he's going to give them a, a, a uh, he's going to give them a blueprint for the tabernacle, which is a tent. And in that tent is going to be a specific place that's called the most holy place, the holiest, holiest place. That's where God's going to be. The holy of holies. Yeah. Holy of holies. Nobody can go in there. They respected that. That's right. The only one person can go in there. It's going to connect over to Christ, but but you know, God God sets Himself apart from them. He's not going to be connected to them. He will now, but not then. And I think I think when we, if you really look at and something I've said before, the Old Testament has one purpose and one purpose only. That's right. It's to bring us to Christ. That's right. That's what it does. Right. And so when I look at this. And I see all the similarities between us and, and where we are now and how different it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, look how different it is. I have a relationship with God that I can look at and say, man, I have a father. They, they didn't have that. They had, a, they had a leader and a God who they, who they were terrified of. Well, and we've talked about, you know, since we started this class, we pointed out, right, what's going on in the story. In Genesis, we have a, have a God who is has control of all things. He makes man. He makes mankind, mm -hmm. right? And then mankind doesn't do what this God has said. This is how Absolutely. you do it. He doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. So God's response to that is to save his creation, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you, you know, my son likes to build Legos, and uh, he builds these these weird things with the, all these Legos and stuff, and he loves what he builds, mm -hmm. right? And he's constantly saving these things from his sisters and from the dog and from everybody else, trying to keep these things mm -hmm. intact and together. God is going to do the same thing. He wants to be in relationship with us. He wants to, to have that connection with us. But how does he go about doing it when his creation is constantly rebelling and pushing him away. This is the first, this isn't the first step, but this is a major step on looking forward to what he's going to do in the church. And everything he sets up here, this covenant, the laws, all of the stuff that he's going to be doing here is going to be reflected or not reflected, but 
realized truly in the church. The, this is only a shadow. It's a shadow. It's a shadow. Of the reality, the actual image will be the church and Christ and the kingdom. Okay? That's right. That's this right. This is a shadow. Because he's going to dwell in the most holy of holies. He's going to dwell right in the center of the camp. Yeah. So he's surrounded by the people. Mm -hmm. And then when they break covenant with him, he's got like this. Now it's like, well, what are we going to do? And that's what Leviticus is about is trying to figure out how we get within this covenant how do we get back into covenant when we've broken the covenant? Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's a real interesting yeah. dynamic. It's so, so important to what's going to come forward in the New Testament. So in verse 16, on the morning of the third day... No, we was, didn't do oh, 14 and 15. Me, excuse me, 14 and 15. After Moses had gone down the mountain to the people, he consecrated them and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, prepare yourselves for the third day. Abstain from sexual relationships. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. We're going to stop right here. But God's presence is now descending on the mountain. He's coming in a cl in a cloud and that's church if you want to, you want to do an in-depth study, check out who always rides on the clouds in the Old Testament. See who comes on the clouds all the time. All the time, all the time, all the time. And then see what Jesus coming on the clouds in Matthew 24. It's it's a really cool study yeah. to see how God moves about all the time on the clouds. It's it's awesome. And so he this, misses that this first is gonna, time. This is going to terrify them it to is. a place that opened in the Red Sea and a pillar of cloud, a pillar of fire, and rock, water from a rock and quail on the ground and manna coming up out of the ground. Now you're going to touch them. Next week, we got to look at, what is it, Hebrews 9? Is it Hebrews 10? Where where he the Hebrew writer says, and we have not come to that mountain but we oh yeah that's, to, i think that's chapter nine is it nine yeah. or ten nine or ten we'll have to look at that we'll have to look at that yeah. comparison we have not come to that mountain. yeah that's that's where it's at it's in hebrews yeah. yeah and it and it's a you know there's so much there's so much connection to us and there's so much connection to the church you know that's why this is such a that, that's why i said this is the beginning this well, is where it and starts. we've got to take our time and church by no means have we covered Every little nook and cranny. No, here. And, and, is, and, we're, and we're skipping over lots of stuff here. There's so much here. There's, I mean, people spend their entire lives studying, you know, just this we section. We could study from just, here to the end of the chapter for the next six years. I mean, it's, there's so much going on in this chapter. We are not claiming that we've covered all of it. We've got a very particular angle that we're teaching towards, and that's yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah. So, church, if you want to dig into this, I want to encourage you to do it. What God is doing here, all the well, things that God is doing Well, it's like we talked about before we started, about the washing of the clothes. Yeah. You know, that was that's that's a symbolic of baptism, it you know, is, and, yeah. and there's a whole study there. We're not going to get into all of that. You know, we're trying to get them to Christ. That's what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to get you to Christ right. so you understand this, the, the, the connection between the old and the new and why it's so important that we understand what the old is. That's right. So we, we can't understand the new if we don't understand the old. Well, it helps us appreciate what, what we have in the new covenant, covenant and mm -hmm. what we are supposed to be doing in the new covenant. That, and that's why some of these verses in the New Testament come alive. Mm -hmm. Hebrews comes alive. Oh, when you understand the Old Testament, um, the Old Covenant, Hebrews comes alive. Absolutely. It's so it's so much fun to study and so much fun to teach when you understand the old system. That's right. If you don't, it doesn't make any sense. It's all very confusing. It makes no sense. Yeah. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the opportunity again that we've had to study. I pray, Father, there's been those who have watched that have been have been blessed by this, what we've talked about. And I pray, Father, they will it has inspired them and encouraged them to study on their own. Father, I pray you're, that you would give us insight and understanding. Help us, Father, to realize the, the full potential that you see for us and, and, and strive every day to accomplish that. And please, Father, Father, be patient with us. We're going to fail. We're going to falter. And we're going to make mistakes. And we ask, Father, for your forgiveness. And we ask, Father, for your patience as we move forward, striving to get better and striving to be the people that your son died to make us. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Okay.